So, about last year, I started watching videos on YouTube about making costumes and stuff and helmets. So, for Halloween, me and my friend decided to make full Mandalorian costumes, and he wanted to make his out of EVA foam, but I didn't want to spend money on EVA foam, so I decided to make it out of the same stuff I've been making my plans out of, which is foam board from the dollar store. So this is the helmet from that. It's not amazing, but it's good enough. And it's made entirely out of foam board from the dollar store. And yeah, that kind of got me started. And then here's a picture of the Mandalorian costume, just so you can see it. It's not great, but it's good enough for me. But um, a little while ago, I saw this YouTube channel called RJR Productions, which you're great. It's a good job um, making cardboard helmets from different movies and stuff. And he made some clone trooper stuff that I really liked, and I like Star Wars too, obviously. And so I wanted to make a Captain Rex helmet. So I decided to just freehand the Captain Rex helmet, and here it is. It's not very accurate at all, but it's recognizable as a Captain Rex helmet, which kind of surprised me. So, yep, um, it's not super accurate, so I wanted to see what I could do with the skills that I have for making planes. So I 3D modeled a clone trooper helmet and made plans off of it, and here's version 1, clone trooper. And then this is the one I'm working on now, which will be a video soon. Um, but. The point is, I've been making a lot of helmets, and my extended family probably knows, and so my aunt is doing the props for Shrek the Musical at some theater somewhere else, um, and got put in charge of all the props, as I said, and she needed a helmet for Shrek and a Lord Farquaad mascot head and she had no idea how to make those. So she asked me if I would make them. She would pay for all the materials and stuff. And so I said, sure, why not? Cause I like making helmets. And so in this video, I'm gonna be making the Shrek helmet. And uh, in the next video, I'm gonna make the Lord Farquaad and it's gonna be pretty great. So let's get started. So pretty much all I'm doing in this part is cutting out the main supports for the dome part of the helmet. So I pretty much just took pictures from online of this helmet, traced out the side and front views of the dome, and then made them fit together, and then I sized them to fit the person that it's going to be worn by. And then I glued it together and glued it onto the ellipse of the like shape of the dome. And yeah, I pretty much just do this to add strength to it while I'm building it make sure that I get the right shape because it's kind of a weird one. Now all I'm doing is cutting out the back plate for the helmet and yeah I pretty much just cut it out just a rectangle and just glue it slightly along the support part for the dome because you don't want to put it all the way on because you're going to need to take the supports off later. So pretty much now I'm just cutting out the main like front like mouth and nose cover piece and it, it, it's just the piece that goes in the front and moves up and down that goes over your nose and mouth. But it's kind of tedious because you have to cut out kind of little squares. And it, But it doesn't look the same without it, so you kind of have to do it. Uh, yeah, and then I cut the line where they connect on both of them at an inward angle so that when I glue them, they're at an angle, as you can see. And then I pretty much just connected them with the little brown, brass brads that allow things to rotate after they're put on. So that's pretty much what that looks like right now. So it looks pretty much the way I wanted it to. It just, this one just turned out too small, so I just start over and I did that off camera. But it's bigger now, so yeah. So pretty much what I'm doing here is just filling in the dome part of the helmet. So I pretty much do the exact same thing as RJR Productions does because I think it's a really 
good way to do it. So good job, RJR Productions. I'm gonna copy you here for a second. Um, but it's just some three inch strips of cardboard that have three inch or three quarter inch deep cuts on both sides about every three quarter inches. And then you bend all of those little sections that are now separate from the rest inwards and then support them with some glue. And then I just size them to the supports of the dome and then cut them to that length and then cut them into triangles and glued them on. And uh, after you do each and every one of the four supports that there are actually there, you're gonna wanna start filling in the corner pieces. It's pretty much the exact same process just without the part underneath it that you're gluing it to. So you just try to kind of make it fit in between the two pieces. So once you're done with that, what you're going to do is take thinner strips of cardboard and place them over the open gaps in the helmet and then you flip it over, stick a pencil inside the dome and trace out the shape that you're going to need to cut out and then you just cut that piece out, fit it in and glue it on. So you do that to the remaining eight gaps and then you'll have the completed dome. That takes a while so I'm just going to let you sit and watch that. So what I'm doing now is cutting out the like eyebrow part that goes over the dome and above your eyes. Um, it's pretty similar to the mouth guard piece and it's almost the exact same thing. You just glue it right where you connect to the mouthpiece too. It's pretty simple and yeah. So that's what the helmet looks like now. It looks almost the exact same as the other one, just bigger with the finished dome and with that like eyebrow part. I connected the mouthpiece with brads again so it can move. And yeah, um, you're gonna see the horns, don't worry. Those will be in the file if you purchase the plans that I'm selling. Um, what I did is just traced them out where I thought they should go. Uh, cut a circle out so that there's a hole where Shrex ears can go into the horn and then super glue and hot glue them on. What I'm actually doing in this video is putting on the rivets and like the extra like minor pieces of steel that are on the back of the helmet. And so I just used some really thin cardboard from this cheese ball box thing. And I just cut little thin lines and glued them on like I saw in the picture. And then for the actual rivets, I just put little dots of hot glue over it and waited for them to like deflate almost until they looked kind of like rivets. And yeah, that's all I did for the details. Now for either the worst or the best part. It can be the best because it'll make it all look way better than just cardboard, but it's also the worst because it takes forever and it's kind of difficult. So what we're doing right now is spackling the dome and the parts of the helmet that need it. And what I'm using is um, lightweight spackling. 
because I didn't want this helmet to weigh very much and I need to use a lot of spackling because I'm, I make a lot of mistakes. But uh, I just kind of spread it a lot of it over the entire dome. And then we'll after it dries, I'll sand it to make it smoother than it is right now. But um, I'm just applying that to parts of the helmet that I think I need it. And the dome definitely needs it. So yeah. And then on the parts that I need to be flexible because the spackle isn't flexible, I'm using Quick Seal because it is flexible but it's less sandable. So I'm just filling a few of the flexible gaps with that. And I'm, all I'm using is my fingers with the glove on it. And yeah, I pretty much just did that. So I sanded it off camera with some 120 grit sandpaper just everywhere. And now I'm just putting some more spackle on parts of it that I feel like need more spackle because there wasn't enough there. And then on the face piece, I decided that I wanted to put quick seal on all of it to cover some more of the corrugation and just make it look all around a little bit better. So I did that. So after sanding it again, I covered it with a coat of Rust-Oleum filler primer and then lightly sanded it after that. Um, and then after that, I put a layer of polyurethane on it so that because it, it made some weird dots and stuff so I wanted to fill it in before I put my next coat on it. Uh, the next coat is Plasti Dip and it's just this rubbery coating that you can put on it and it makes it smooth and that's what I ended up putting on with my last coat because I liked it to finish the most. And then after that I put more spackle on it in places that I saw needed more, sanded that a little bit, and put some more Plasti Dip on it. After the final coat of Plasti Dip, um, I sprayed some gloss darker gray spray paint on it to prepare for the next step. So here's the helmet right now, they're not actually connected. I want to make sure I get every part of this all finished. But I this is after one coat of the glossy gray paint. And now what I'm going to do is take some of this graphite powder and a piece of cotton. I just have these because this is what I have. You just need some sort of cotton. Um, and then you just open it up. Uh, if the cotton in and then you just rub it on and then it now looks looks deep so I'm gonna do that to the whole helmet okay since the entire helmet's been rubbed with graphite um now to make it even shinier we're just going to take an entirely clean piece of cotton and then rub the entire thing really hard and buff it up so then it's as shiny as it can be so i'm gonna do that okay now that it has been completely rubbed and buffed with graphite powder and it's really shiny uh, I'm going to cover it in a coat of pledge floor gloss because that's what people recommended and I feel like it worked so I'm going to do that Here's what the finished helmet looks like after all the steps are done. So, after all that, here's the finished helmet. Um, it turned out pretty much exactly what I wanted it to. 
how I wanted it to, I guess. And yeah, it's nice and shiny. And it is way too big for me, but it'll it'll fit the person it's supposed to. So yeah. If you like this video, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm gonna be selling the templates to this helmet on my Etsy store. So if you wanna make this, then go ahead and check that out in the description. And that'll about wrap it up. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed, please subscribe. See you.